good morning to all of you every 5 seconds somebody goes blind in our world every minute a child goes blind and uh, this is a serious uh, public health blindness is a public a serious public health problem 45 million being blind totally and 135 million impaired due to uh, different causes and 90% of them are live in the developing worlds india being not a very developed country uh you have almost uh, very highest burden of uh, blindness in the world and that is about 10000 people per million population and think of about 1 billion how many of blind we will have and uh, this uh, country represents some of the innovative solutions to these problems very early on but those have not been very effective what those have been like this national program for prevention of blindness started in early 50s when no country has thought about it but uh, that program has not done very well to prevent the blindness or to curtail the blindness then we face the challenges how do we uh, how do we address the problem of accessibility of eye care to people who we can't reach in the remote rural areas how do we uh, treat the patients who have incurable blindness those kind of solutions need innovation and those innovative solution combined with the care to people whom we can't reach is something a big challenge and we are doing addressing both of these issues uh, by doing a cutting edge research and reaching to the people in remote rural areas by establishing our vision care centers in the rural areas the kind of uh, eye you are seeing here you can make out that it you person cannot see from that obviously this is all destroyed and these kind of conditions which need innovation and what i am going to say to you some of the ideas that how that kind of innovation has impacted the people like me and you who are who are not able to see please enjoy this story of uh, amazing bus driver kuldeep singh in october last year one man saved the lives of many others at the risk almost of his own kuldeep singh was the brave bus driver who survived a bomb in his bus but lost his eyesight a year after the delhi blast there is hope Well, stem cell, a technique pioneered by Dr. Virendra Sangwan in India, has helped restore some of Kuldeep's vision. Earlier this week, Dr. Sangwan was awarded the prestigious Patnagar Award. That's the Indian equivalent of the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Blasts had rocked Sarojini Nagar and Pahar Ganj in the capital. A few minutes after six that evening, Kuldeep Singh was alerted about a bomb on the bus he was driving. In minutes, passengers were evacuated. But as he voluntarily threw the bomb out, it exploded. he was seriously injured and lost vision in both his eyes ab dekho almost a year on he is already regained 20% vision and the novel therapy his doctor is using on him is expected to help him regain half his vision Dr Sangwan from Hyderabad's LV Prasada Institute has worked with patients like Kuldeep. His technique uses Kuldeep's own adult stem cells. These are essentially magical cells that can transform into living layers needed to restore the vision Dr Sangwan hoped would restore Kuldeep's vision. Kuldeep first underwent a cornea transplant on his damaged right eye. Though his left eye was badly damaged too, luckily for him a few live stem cells could still be harnessed from it. These cells Dr Sangwan hoped when grown in the laboratory and introduced in his right eye would regrow the outer protective layer of the eye enabling him to see Kuldeep was craving to see his newborn son which was made possible only after this operation bachche ko ji hum dekh rahe hain to itna dekh lete hain jaise wo haath hila raha hai ya hans raha hai to itna mere ko dikh jata hai ye auto ja raha hai ya ye gaadi ja rahi hai ye bus ja rahi hai ये कौन से रंग की गाड़ी जा रही है इतना दिखता है हां जी आई हैव डन लाइक कुलदीप्स केस व्हिच नोबडी वुड हैव टेस्ट एंड व्हाई इज दैट oh just simply because uh, you know you need to take risk the technique is not a cure all for all kinds of blindness but only for certain injury related cases kuldeep needs another minor operation followed by some more stem cell therapy to regrow the damaged part hopefully then at least half of his vision might be restored and in time this technology which comes from the bedside to the bench and back again to the bedside will hopefully bring back vision to several priyam hasin ndtv equally a compelling story of a young boy abhishek sharma who has allergic eye disease not a trauma which many of our uh, kids suffer and he went blind before he went to high school and he lost the hope to live or to study further he was dropped out of from the school uh, he was uh, we treated him took the tissue from his both parents 
grown in the lab and transplanted. Today he has a wonderful family, he's pursuing his MBA and he's working in a bank uh, for the last uh, 10 years, his life has changed. This gentleman is an Indian, settled in uh, Canada, 75 years old when I saw him for the first time. Uh, he went blind in 1950 due to a chemical accident and after that he has gone around in different countries in North America, could not find a solution and he has not seen his kids growing. He has not seen when they got married. His, uh, we treated, the tissue was donated by her do his daughter who was living in Switzerland at that time and he saw for the first time his kids, his wife, 40 years later. And that uh, kind of uh, uh, gift is something wonderful. Another man from another uh, uh, land, uh, from Netherlands, uh, he is an engineer and lost his eyesight because of some injury at work and he used to get up before, once he gets up he has to uh, pull the curtains, put the sunglasses and life was miserable. He started losing confidence, business, everything and uh, he tried everything, you know, did not find a solution. And the internet made his uh, treatment possible because he found us uh, by a net and then came over and after that his life had changed. He has started growing business, he started a business interest in Indi India and other countries and now lives a very uh, happy life. These two young girls, victim of Chuna uh, packet injury, which we use in PAN, which is very common in India and in, uh, in Bangladesh. And these girls lost their one eye because of Chuna injury, Chuna going into the eye and uh, they came over and got a bonus of meeting the President Klam because he, had, he was there at that time to inaugurate our stem cell lab. So, these kind of treatments are impacting, are changing lives for these young boys and girls and some of them uh, did uh, work initially but did fail uh, eventually and then we found another treatment, what you are seeing in this video clip is called an artificial cornea or keratoprosthesis where which we assemble and put in a donor cornea and put on the eye. All these are different victims. This girl Arpita is a sixth year, uh, seventh grade student and somebody threw acid in her eye because she uh, opened her mouth in the class. That's the teacher suspected somebody has uh, smoked, so he said, I'm not going to teach. And somebody should tell otherwise, I'm not going to teach the class. The girl dared to open her mouth and the boy threw the acid in her eye, losing both the eyes. It's some uh, kind of problems. We can't treat with stem cells. We can't treat with keratoprosthesis. We do a something really complex. It's called tooth in the eye. We cut out the tooth like what you're seeing here, chiseling it, sawing it then make a hole in the uh, uh, tooth, put an optical cylinder and then we put under the skin for three months so that it becomes normal and then we uh, create a pocket onto the eye on the cornea, suture it and then cover with um, mucous membrane or the membrane wet tissue from the mouth, cover it whole. So the, each procedure takes about six to eight hours, four stages, total duration of surgery is about six to eight months. But they do see, like this patient Namdev from Maharashtra, he sees for, uh, for the first time after nine years, suffering from a very serious condition called um, Steven Johnson syndrome. Now, f about myself, I, like many of you, I come from a very small village in Haryana, in Bhivani district. I did my medical school and uh, my uh, MS in Rohtak Medical College. And why did I specialize in, uh, med in, uh, in eye? At that time, when I was, like you, I was in uh, college, my idea was simple. I said, I don't want to do a government job. I want to do my private practice. And if you do I, it may be easier to do uh, private practice. But that was not the case. Then I came to know about LV Prasada Institute, which started just few years back. And I wanted to do a fellowship. But I did not know what, mean, what do we mean by fellowship. I just knew they will teach me surgeries. Because in our MS, we did not learn the modern surgery. We just uh, learned the older way. And I realized that if I have to live another 40 years working, I can't live with the old techniques. I have must learn newer techniques. So the choice at that time was criticized by everybody. They said, no, no, you should be working in a medical college, be a professor. I said, no, I want to go and there. So I just recently got married. Both me and my wife cried whole night. But I said, if I don't go now, we will forever be in different position. So she finally agreed. Then when I was doing fellowship at LV Prasada Institute, I had uh, learned about Orbis, which is a flying eye hospital. And then I wanted to join it because that's a fantastic way of seeing the world and at the same time doing some uh, thing related to blindness. But I said I cannot take that decision until, until my wife uh, approves of it. So I asked her first and she said, um, give me one or two days. And finally she said, no, I think you should go. So at every stage, the way we made decision was very difficult, very unconventional. Just a little bit about Orbis, what, what they are doing.
This DC-10 aircraft, donated by the generosity of two men, Mr. Al Yulchi of the United States and Mr. Y. C. Ho from Hong Kong, is flown by volunteer pilots from several major air carriers. Inside is a complete state-of-the-art eye surgery hospital, which is operated by an international team of healthcare personnel who have shared their skills in 70 countries since 1982. In this process, what I did again, I went around at least 25, 30 countries, which if I had uh, just be uh, not on orbit, I would have never traveled. And never traveled to the countries which are listed here because they are very un, uh, poor. As a tourist, you won't go and spend your money on those uh, destinations. And in the process, learned a lot about the culture, about the level of eye care in these countries. I think it was a very enriching experience as when I just out of the medical school. And a very unconventional decision at that time. Most people said, why are you going to Orbis? You should make money. You are well-traveled. Now you should do this and that. Look, I said, this is not important. I want to travel. I want to see the world. From there, because in my fellowship, I had some questions which were bothering me uh, as a student, and I did not get the answer, and I wanted to learn a little more. I found a professor at Harvard and who accepted me as a research fellow. And everybody again said, are you going to research fellowship? That means you may not be a good surgeon, may not be a good clinician. That's why you are going to research. I said, no, I just think that I need to learn a little more before I can start practicing. So doing research at my time, about 18 years back, was not anything, which is not even anything today also for clinicians. And that's why in medical research, we are not doing great. Uh, we are doing good as a clinician, but we are not doing great in research. So during that uh, fellowship, what did it give me? It gave a completely different insight how you treat your patient, looking at the animal models, looking at the pathogenesis, looking at all different angles. When I was in US, it was, I discovered that it's not, uh, you know, nobody believes you that when I said, okay, I come only for two years. They said, everybody says so. When you go to US, you don't go back. And I said, no, but I'm going to go back. He said, yeah, everybody says like that. So finally, when I finished my fellowship, on, along the way, I got my son uh, born there, and my mother-in-law came, and she tried to convince me and my wife that we should stay there. I said, no, but we are made for India. We are not going to stay here. So she could not uh, convince her. Finally, the time came. I said, I'm going back. And they said, you must be stupid. You must be a jart. I said, which I am. So um, I said, okay, I'm going back. So my friend tried to convince me. I said, no, I'm going to go back. I said, tell us why are you going? I said, if I am going to do the work which I do now here in America, I'll be like another eye doctor. With the same effort, if I go to India, I may be able to make some difference. And that's what I chose to. And I said, that's what my uh, life is all about. I would like to go back and do whatever I do, and may this, that may have some impact. And that impact, I did not decide. I did not know what it is. But when I came back, I started seeing these kind of uh, patients who have very serious problems, and there was no solution. And I chose to focus my energy, despite all my colleagues telling that these things are not for India. They don't work here. We created an uh, alternative way of treatment. And now today, this is the largest series with longest follow-up of 10 years. And everybody is learning from these uh, uh, techniques what we are uh, practicing. When you have uh, work in the team, like right now what you're seeing in an Indian cricket team, they look like they are a team, but they are not a team, right? So sometimes it looks like the, saying the team is very nice, but the working in a team is not very easy. Why it is not very easy? Because you have to deal with different perspectives, the fears, the hopes, and the aspirations, very different for each individual. Then you get sometimes, you know, I used to get every time that my colleagues give an interview in a TV or newspaper, suddenly it's on the headlines, and I'm operating in the operating room. And next day my patient says, doctor, you told me you are doing the stem cell, but here the, you are not seen here. I said, but how does it matter? He said, no, no, but you are doing it. I said, I still do it. Did I not you operate you? He said, no, yeah, you did the operation, but this is some other, somebody else are claiming they are doing I said, they are part of my team. He said, but your name should be there. I said, how does it matter? Ultimately, as long as I am able to treat you, it doesn't matter whether my name is there or not. And if you are not grounded, if you don't look the long-term perspective, you, you will blow off the team because that's where the problem is. And I always had uh, my uh, reasoning is that my goal is to treat patients and give them, help them, and in the process, whatever the help I get is fantastic. So in these things, you get disturbed, but you should come back. And you should not uh, go away from and destroy the team. Another thing that you want to learn to uh, live with the criticism, because anything you do out of the routine, you will be criticized. That is given. And as I told you in my story, that from the beginning, I was criticized by everyone. 
and when we started doing the stem cells in my institute, which is a very advanced, which is very progressive, everyone said, why are you taking tissue from the normal eye? How do you know the patient won't go blind? I said, if my patient and I don't have a problem, why are you worried? It is going to be all right because the amount of tissue we take is very small. So we will continue. And finally now it has reached a stage that it is respected across the globe. And about two years back, I got a very nasty comment by a reviewer for which a grant I submitted from UK. He said, you know, India is not for this cutting edge technology. You should be treating tuberculosis and malaria. I said, sir, we already treat, re treated more patients than you or anybody else in the world. So it's, I'm not uh, imagining, it's I'm doing it. And finally, I got the grant. So I'd like to thank uh, all my colleagues, my team members, uh, who has helped and are working with me different time, point in time, our collaborators, our funding agents. Especially I'd like to mention Sudhakar and Srikant uh, Ravi brothers, who are entrepreneurs in the US. They are very young, 36 year old, they have very successful venture. And he visited once and he said, uh, after seeing my work, and he said, you know, doctor, there is no, uh, don't worry about money. Money is, won't be a problem. I said, work is not a problem. So he said, whenever you need big money, come back to me. Not for few lakhs, but few crores. So the same day he left a check with my chairman of 100,000 US dollar. He said, I like uh, the stem cell lab here to be the best in the world. So, after that, the money for us has never been a problem. So we have been able to establish the work. And I'd like to leave with you some inspiring words from Eric, who is a, a uh, world-class no blind adventurer. For air. He went blind at age 12. He's 32 now.